Well, well, well. Hello. How are you today? Thank you for tuning into the show. Really appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. What, what are you up to right now, huh? You working on something? You at work? Are you, are you leaving early? You in the car? You getting angry at other drivers who don't use their turn signal? Hey, I'm on your side. We Sam's on your side today. Guess who else is on your side? Michael Brania. Am I? Yeah, oh, Michael, yes. Of course, you, they're our listener. <laughs> our one listener for the show. That's the way I'm doing the show from now on. We are literally doing it for one person, and that's you, the person listening on the other end right the now. The listener. The listener. Whatever, Michael. Hey, <laughs> special thanks to Guayaki for keeping us refreshed, hydrated, and saving the Am- Amazon rainforest. Because guess what? We need that saving more than ever, so we appreciate you, Guayaki. Also... Patreon. Boom. We have so many new supporters on there. And I want to say thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon for giving us a little extra every month. And we're giving you back a lot more. You get behind the scenes videos from our show and and a book club of the month as well. Also, you ask me a question on there and guess what? You, You not only get a response, but a video response. How does that sound, Michael? Sounds excellent. Yes, it is, sir. It is excellent. And if you have an Alexa, guess what? All you have to do is go, hey, Alexa, play Adobe Radio. Boom. Adobe Radio is playing without you having to touch anything. Are we in the future? Yes, we are. So excited. My guest today is someone very close to me. You've seen him on the show a couple times before. He's my brother, William Keish. <sighs> if you're a Patreon supporter, you can see the, the behind-the-scenes video, and you can – I'm already angry at him, already angry at my brother because he said something that made me blood-red mad. And we're going to get right into it. So ladies and gentlemen, oh, excuse me, not ladies and gentlemen, you, the listener, please welcome William Keish. Mm-hmm. This is it. Show's starting. Hey, hey, you got a dollar. You got a dollar. You got a dollar. You got a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that for an I, I could do that for way too long, right? And it, and it hurts. You got a dollar. Yeah. Why are we, we have the same. We're brothers. Yeah. That's what happens. We have the same hand placement right now. So October's coming up. Yeah. And I'm really excited. Michael, I forgot to tell you about this. We're getting on some ghost hunters. Yeah. And we're yeah. going to make it spooky. Cool. For the month of October. That's all that we're going to talk about. Scoopy. Scoopy. Scooby. Ooh. Scooby. Scooby stuff. Spooky stuff whole month of October. So I was mentioning to William here and like, oh, we should do a Ouija board session here no, in the room. Nope. Nope. Mm-mm. Oh my See, God. Thank you, Michael. Three notes. Are, <laughs> three notes. Are you guys freaking serious? Listen, man, come on. You don't want to mess with that. I, oh, you, come you on. What's that? the worst? Dude. What's the worst that yeah, could happen? Uh, dude. Do you want me to answer that? Yes. Go ahead. You're inviting bad energy. Bad energy. What do you mean bad energy? What does that mean? Uh, oh, I, it could mean a lot of things. I don't know exactly. A demon? A I ghost? don't know, man. I don't know. Do you know for sure? No, that's why I want to okay, do it. I want to so, see something crazy, dude. So respect the space. No, the we want to get it on camera so we can get views and so I can make money, dude. That's all this is about. I read I read a, a, a new feature script called True Haunting. Yeah. Uh, about this house in Chicago that was really, really haunted and tried to keep the family there in the house. Okay. Like the ghosts were f- real fucked up and they tried to keep them in the house. Ooh. Okay, so you're saying if we do the Ouija board here, we we're never, we'll, gonna, we'll, leave. We're never gonna leave the studio. Yeah, well, that oh, would man. that would be cool. You know, Daniel, one time <laughs> he brought a Ouija board into my car. When okay, I was in high school. High school. Okay, and he pulled it out of his backpack, and yeah. I literally pulled over oh, on the man. side of the road, oh, and I made him throw it out. Dude, are you are you for real right now? One hundred percent. Dude, I, I, I don't, don't want, believe anything's going to happen. I don't. I, I, I kind of want something to happen. I, That's the thing, though. Like, come on, let's do why? something. Come no. on, ghosts. Come out of there. I want to come out like. <laughs> you say that. You say that, but I don't. Dude, I don't it would give you such an adrenaline rush. <laughs> Call it that. Sure. That's what it's about. <laughs> Money and adrenaline. <laughs> you seriously uh, wouldn't do it with me? I No, I, yeah, I would not do it. Pain? Under any circumstance. What? Would you do it? Hell no. Oh, come on. Michael? Dude, no. I would get possessed by, like, the devil himself or something like that. That'd be great for views. No. Yes. <laughs> Michael, 
We need views. Michael, I looked at Michael. <laughs> Shit. What? I looked at Peyton. <laughs> oh, the devil's like. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. This podcast has started off. Which, which ghost hunters do you like? Which which show? I know you like. Um, I like that? them all. I like Ghost Adventures. Ghost Adventures. That's I so like uh, Haunting. I like, uh, what is it? Ghost Hunters International. Sometimes they get cringy, and I and I love it. When Zach, they get that guy, Zach, Zach Bagans, Bagans. I need to see. Here's the here's the issue that I have with those ghost hunting shows. As much as I love them, fun fact: I actually go to sleep watching them every single uh, night. Psychopath. Yes. That helps me sleep. No joke. I'm right there with you. Yeah. So, I, I'm not calling these people liars because I don't know them. You know what I mean? But I know how easy it is to fake footage like that with those gut- sure. ghost hunting shows, especially nowadays with like editing and stuff. Yeah. So how am I supposed to believe it's real? How can they make it more, I don't know, how can they prove to me that it's real and not just editing? Bring it to you here in the studio. With exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, want, I want to be the living proof of that. You know what I mean? I want them to come in here, invite me on their show, or we do it right here in the studio. Maybe the studio's haunted, guys. Maybe we... I'll bring Sage. We send them around. We could do like a yeah. <laughs> we do EVPs. No. Are you that scared? That makes me angry. That I'm you're not this scared. scared about I just it. don't like inviting oh. energy that doesn't need to be invited. Oh my gosh! Will sue you? me. I wish I could sue you right now. Sue me over this. I, <laughs> oh, I dare wish you I could to try. Su- <laughs> You'll get nothing. <laughs> I, I go to jail for some reason. <laughs> Do you believe in ghosts? Uh, I believe in energy. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what. I. I, know. I, I think. I, I think you can get vibes from someone. Let's yeah, say that's for or sure. a place. Whether it's true or not, you mm. feel something. Okay. And I don't want to feel bad stuff. Here's the thing. I don't believe it or un- not believe it. I just want to see it, just to have a solid opinion about it. That's why I want to do a Ouija board. I want it to levitate, so be like, oh, whoa, holy shit, that's and a what, ghost. What if nothing happens? Then I'm like, ah, well, for, from my experience, nothing's happening. Or if I do it again, I have to do it more than once. I know, but that logic is flawed. How is it flawed, sir? You can't. Oh, it's it's. What's the thing? It's like the whole. Um, it's like the proof of God thing. Yeah. Okay. So should I not even try it? I recommend not to. Why though? Why? Why don't you? What's the opposite of a Ouija board? I don't know. What's the opposite of a Ouija board? A, That's the weirdest a, question. A nice smelling candle. How about oh. that? Bring that inside, and there you go. You got good vibes. No. You got some incense. I want to see a ghost. Bring some incense in. I want to see some ghosts. Like, not even just an American ghost, one of those Japanese scary ghosts. What would they be doing? I, you know what they do. They just crawl around backwards, and they're like, the, the rope is hanging, and Why they're like, yeah, Adobe I'm Radio, What? Why would they be at Adobe Radio? They wouldn't. I would have to go to Japan. <laughs> I want to watch a, a good scary movie that's new. How about How about this? Yeah. What you? What were you gonna say? How I was gonna say, what's the scariest nationality of ghost? You know, is it a Japanese, American, Chinese, Russian, British, Canadian? Canadian? Oh what? God. Why do you? Th- you need to speak into the mic. We need to get that mic working. I I'll tell you. I'll tell you the it's least. Working. I'll tell you. Michael, Kate, every or Kate. single time. Call God me Michael it. one more time, <laughs> we Sam. Uh, you both are the same person to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the least scary. But a, a vaudeville ghost. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny, honestly. I think Family Guy or someone's done something a like that. A vaudeville ghost? Yeah. 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 Um, but what nationality of ghosts would be the least and the most scary? That's a good question. This is a question I'm going to ask like, the ghost hunters. <laughs> I feel like Russian ghosts would be scary. Could be. Aggressive. I yeah. feel they would be super aggressive. And that's aggressive. what would be scary for me. Okay. Voodoo, something voodoo related. Yeah. That's cool. Haitian ghost. Yeah. Oh. There's like, be careful. Okay, come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's black magic, you know? Okay. What? <laughs> What'd you say? Okay. You know, voodoo, voodoo. Wait, what did you just say? <laughs> Japanese. Is what I said. <laughs> oh, that's what? not, we're not going to edit that out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about ghosts. Uh, <laughs> I want to know. I think the funnest, the fun, funnest ghost, the most fun ghost, is a Mexican ghost. I think those are scary, actually. 
like the. Um, Why are they scary? Have you seen messy? the? No, the. the <laughs> this is going. What's that one? Par- the paranormal. Dead, dead, dead. I know. I this love it. Paranormal Activity. The I think one of the newer ones. Oh, the marked ones. Yeah, that one was terrifying. That one was up. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. It was right. Latina ghost. Let- Dude, I wish somebody would comment and be like, they're so racist. <laughs> they're talking about ghosts. Never hear about, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Never hear about Arabic ghosts. Do you? That's very true. That's weird. But we have jinn. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've seen some like videos about like this, the jinn cave or whatever. Yeah, yeah, which is much more terrifying, I feel like. It's a little scary. Yeah. Uncontrollable. I want to see the new It movie. Yes. Definitely, definitely want to see yeah. that. We're trying to get Wyatt back on. Hopefully this coming week, if we can. I talked to Brandy. Oh, really? Yeah, cool. we'll see what happens. Well, that, worked. that would work out really yeah. well. Um, what, have you guys ever encountered a ghost or anything scary like that? Michael, go ahead. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Peyton? Dude, I, I don't know if I classify it as ghost or spirit or whatever, but I shit you not, okay. when I was six years old, uh, it was like Christmas break. Me and my family, we went to uh, Branson, Missouri to go to like Silver classic. Dollar City. Yes. Stuff like that classic trip mm. for Oklahoma people. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I wake up in the middle of the night and I see a figure standing in our hotel room that looks like my deceased grandpa. And I cannot move. And I'm just mm. staring at him. I'm not afraid or anything. But like I do see him yeah. standing there and I'm just kind of like. Okay. Wow. Dead grandpa there. Do you think it might have been sleep paralysis? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it sounds next like it. morning. Like sleep paralysis. Yeah, next morning. Sorry. Next morning. Go ahead. Grandma was found dead. Oh. Oh. I'm. I'm not. I don't, oh, I'm gosh. trying not to laugh. I don't, no. I'm not laughing. It's. <laughs> It's freaky. You, that I was not expecting that. That's such I, a curveball. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm laughing because <laughs> yeah. it's a curveball. Oh, that is. What, how long yeah. ago was this? I was six years old. So, of course, my parents are like, oh, nah. I was like, I saw a grandpa yesterday. And they're like, oh, the idiot. fact that you're really young, too, makes that. Yeah. Mm. So I've held on to kids or ghosts creepy. for a long time. Mm. I will go into like a place that's like spooky. Yeah. But that's, I don't know. Ouija boards are where I. I don't but do why? Because we don't know who's moving. Because I know something can appear. In a place. Have you seen? Oh. And that's what I don't want to happen. I don't want something bad to appear. Would you guys be around me while I'm using absolutely. it? Absolutely. No. Oh, he said absolutely. You are <laughs> definitely being around me while that's happening. Oh, I'm I, blood red mad now. Michael? I believe it only affects the user. That's Does my it? thing. I, that's my Does thing. Because I don't know. That's my logic that I'm going Michael, with. imagine if something did happen. No. The, the experience that <laughs> would translate. Rich. Hold on. The experience that would translate to you as a writer, what you could write about. Ooh. Uh, not worth it. Is it? Oh, oh. It's you and me, man. No, it's William, too. <laughs> Can't force Michael, but I can force William because he's my brother. You, you can see from my perspective how it makes sense not to even want to invite any of that. Nah. Just be strong. It doesn't make sense. Just be like strong enough to go like, yeah. If something it's does come out, I'll, I'll be it's like, it's about no. smart versus <gasps> not smart. That's not smart, <laughs> dude. Demon comes out. You're not gonna elbow the demon in the face. Okay, let's talk about double best leg case, takedown. Best case and worst case scenarios. Best case scenario. What happens? Best case. Yeah, best case. Oh. You use it, and what happens? Nothing. That's best. Oh case no, no, for no, me. no, 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 oh, no. That's the best case for you. What's the best out case? of your imagination? Oh, that's we, the best case. Oh, Ouija board. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. The best case scenario, we do it, and this b- bright light comes out and goes, "Oh, you, f- oh, you have freed me. I am an angel in the Ouija board. People are scared to use me, but now I'm free. I grant you any wish you please." And it grants us a wish. That's the best case scenario. Okay. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Uh, I am the devil of devils. I will destroy everything. And, and then it tries to destroy everything, and then God comes down and stops it. Oh, easily. Not worth it. No. <laughs> no. This guy. I think I won. No, you didn't. I think I won. No, you didn't. Not worth it. Worst case scenario? Not worth it. <laughs> we get an incurable disease. <laughs> okay. <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Michael, are you still out? What? No, I'm just reading these Ouija board stories. Oh, great. <laughs> 
He's I, I, any don't, good ones. Don't allow him. <laughs> don't let him no. There, there. See, I don't want to read stories. I want to experience it That's firsthand. Fair. Worst case scenario, you got a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Great callback, sir. Thanks, William. One of the reasons I brought you on the show today was because we wanted to tease to our listener. Oh, that you have your debut song coming out very soon. Woo. Pretty that, soon. That you wrote, produced, and what else? Mixed. Mixed everything. And I got help with the mastering. Shout out to Riley Taylor. Don't know him. Part of the Siege. Yeah. Part of the Siege. <laughs> uh, he's a great producer, a very talented friend right. of mine. They're going on tour soon, uh, right? The Siege. Next topic. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the process? Because I've been listening to you kind of mix this over the past few weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it seems to be a very tedious uh, process. Well, it's tedious for a couple of reasons. Uh, main one being I'm still pretty new at it. I'm okay. about a year into this whole producing game, if you will. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot that goes into production in general. Uh, as, and so when you're trying to hone in on something, uh, musically and and produce it there's going to be a lot that goes into it from the instruments the hardware the software uh the type of computer you're using right uh, all that stuff and so it's been very tedious in the sense of training my ear while at the same time learning how to use all this stuff uh mixing on different speakers mixing in my car headphones comparing um right because when you mix something it sounds different if you're in your car versus if you're on really nice speakers versus if you listen to it like on your computer. You'll be able to hear different things like my Yamaha monitors that I have at home. Mm -hmm. They're very crisp and clear and you can really kind of uh, hear everything very clearly. Yeah. But when you're in the car, there are, there are different speakers obviously. And so you might get a lot, a lot more low end kind of coming through that might show some muddiness that didn't show and mm-hmm. those speakers, or let's say if you listen with Air AirPods or, or headphones, right. what most people will listen on, that's going to sound a little bit different too. So just constantly comparing and um, yeah, just tweaking. Mm-hmm. Now, this being kind of your debut song that you worked primarily solo for your solo Correct. artist yeah. self. Yeah, we kind of talked about it a little bit beforehand, but the overthinking process that happens like oh i should change this or yeah. should i tweak this should i do this should i do this, should I do this? Yeah. what are you doing to stop that um or how are you dealing with it it's more how how to deal with it mm. um i was talking with daniel about it actually and he gave me some really good advice about it daniel quiche our brother daniel, our, our brother. brother he's in dental school right now right and he was working on a, a tooth and they were working on carving something he said he'd been working on it for hours mm-hmm and he was listening to the student next to him that the professor was kind of helping with him with it. And the professor was telling him, you'll reach a certain zone. I forgot what the zone was called while you're working on this thing. And any point after that zone, if you keep working on it, you're just messing things up. And that can relate to a lot of other things. You, I'm sure you can relate it to acting. The more you um, kind of start tweaking things or, or messing with things or – Let's say you're painting something and you keep adding colors. It's eventually just going to be a muddy mess. So you have to know when to stop. You have to know when it's going to be the best that it can be, really. I get that. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. I'm curious to see, to hear what Michael's process is with the overthinking. Like, how does he deal with that, with writing, and see what parallels? Mm. I was actually just thinking that it is very similar. Um, And sometimes you do just have to just power through it and just let it, if for me, for like a first draft, for instance, it, you just got to go and just finish, have the finished product and then go back and you can make changes later. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how you don't overthink it too much because mm-hmm. you can always go back later. Because the only person that's going to, in my opinion, when I, when I do this um, for my first drafts, it's the only person that I want to see it is me. That's interesting. And the, on the first run. Because yeah. I, I find it a little different with acting, and it, it varies. How so? Well, sometimes you <clears throat> you can, and this is not all the time, but you'll read through it on your own a few times, and you're like, 
I feel really connected to this emotionally. Mm. Let's say you're doing a self tape and you're like, let me just, let me just do a take. Boom. The take has everything in it. It's like all there. It happens. It's like, cool. I'm just going to leave it. One take. Awesome. And I've booked jobs like that yeah. from one take and just, I felt really emotionally connected. It was just in the zone. It worked out. Then, uh, then other self tapes that I've had, I've had to really work on it. I've done like 20, 25, 30 takes. Yeah. And sometimes the 30th take is the one that works. Sometimes it's the 10th take. Yeah. So I have to be a good judge and be very in tune and aware with myself with, okay, what's working best for here? Now you can't do that really with painting. I feel like with painting, it's kind of just there. Mm. That's it. Once you put that brush stroke, that's permanent. Yeah. You can't change it. If you want to change something, usually you have to start all over, especially if you mm. have like a whole thing. Well, it didn't like Van Gogh, like that's why he did like the, like, he painted the way that he did. Cause like if he did mess up, he would able to be like able to Interesting. fix it. Interesting. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. No, might, but it makes sense. It makes sense, right? especially if you couldn't afford supplies. You don't want to keep messing up, right? Yeah. So, and then with writing, I feel like it's more similar with acting. And there is stuff with music. You mm. know, like you can. It's easier to take away things. Mm. And or like, okay, you know what? I work too much. Let me go back to the That's this how, raw skeleton of what this song was originally. Because I've messed with it so much, I need yeah. to go back to what it was originally. So I feel like. Daniel, what Daniel said, I think that's totally helpful, mm. but you have to know when to apply that exactly, because yeah. you have people and I've experienced this doing Shakespeare. You'll do the same. You've been practicing for months and then you're doing the show for another month. And then all of a sudden the last night mm. of the show, you're like, oh, that scene makes so much more sense to me. Now I get it. Or after I got done doing Hamlet, it was like weeks after the show. And it hit me how to do one scene that wasn't hitting right. Wow. So you have to, it just depends do on the think, project. Do you think, uh, cause I was also going to say, sometimes I get fatigued from listening to a mix over and over and tw- tweaking and working on this mm-hmm. one thing that I just need to step back for the rest of the day, not listen to it at all, forget about it. In fact, and then come back at it with fresh ears. Yes. I think though, for me with time as an actor, mm-hmm. to t- I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I could, I could work that. It just depends on the scene. Again, depends on what we're working on. Right, right. I can work that scene for five hours and I'd be like, cool, let's do it again. Let's see what else we can find. It just depends what we're working on. Mm. If I'm doing a monologue, like when I, the ones I did for, for the people, dude, I'll run that thing to the ground so that the next day it's so in my bones. And then the next day it's it's even more in my bones. Like, yeah. I, and I'm just finding new things and I'm, and I'm going, okay, I already know how to get into the groove of this. Yeah. It's interesting. The differences between the two and similarities, and but similarities, yeah. sometimes you can hit a monologue uh, right off the cuff, but I think it comes with experience because a brand new actor, I think that would really struggle, struggle with, yeah. I think it comes with years of experience and, and how far are you progressing talent and, and, and craft wise. Yeah. Mm. What do you think, Michael? <clears throat> um, I mean, yeah. Uh, we, I do the same thing with writing, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think like what you were saying earlier in that you get uh, cr- critiques from certain – from all these different people. I think what you have to do is um, take the right ones yes. and apply it uh-huh. because it, ultimately it is – it's up to you. So like you could have 10 different people, producers, agents, writers, mm-hmm. other writers telling you – what they're looking for and what they want, but you have to take the good criticisms from that yes. and apply it in the way that works for you. Yeah. And agreed. that's, that's yeah. what I've found for myself. Yeah. Um, same thing with like, when you say stepping back, um, I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I, uh, I've been, t- I take breaks between drafts of like different projects. So right now I'm planning to go back to, a script that I wrote like nine years ago. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, and then I will be going back to, uh, to one of my other scripts, founding fathers soon. Cause I have some ideas that I want to apply, mm. but See, it's, so, it's about getting that perspective for sure. Stepping right. away from it to like, let it breathe. And then you can come back. Very interesting how there's similarities 
and differences. Peyton, when you're uh, you're an actor as well, just yeah. so people know, but uh, you also have your own YouTube channel, which is uh, mm-hmm. uh, pretty successful. Do you find that there is similarities in the editing process whenever you're editing your videos for the stuff that you do? Yeah, in a way, I am so hard on myself when it comes to my YouTube videos. There are so many videos I have finished editing them, and I go, I'm not uploading this. Mm. Like, I, I, I don't feel like uploading this anymore. Um, I usually have to finish editing it within the week, or while it's still like, oh, this is a good idea for a video. Because if I put it off long enough, I'll start thinking about it, and I'm like, no, that's not a good idea for a video. I shouldn't do that. So I don't like rush my content at all. But I find while I still have an idea fresh in my head, I have to act on that right away, get it going. Because if I do what uh, you guys say for like writing and music, if I take a step back and I take a breather for it, I'm going to start second guessing myself. Mm. I'm so, I'm my worst (laughs) critic. It's so bad. I think that, you know, that deals with a lot of artists. Uh, that, That problem is the confidence issue. Yeah. And I think that just takes practice. And where that confidence comes from is trusting that I've been practicing this over and over. I've been doing this long enough where now I can be a very good judge of what's good and what's not good. Right. And as a musical artist, as a writer, eventually you get to that point where I, I, I'm good. I know that. I've been practicing long enough where I know I'm good. Now I can really determine whether I'm just being insecure or if this really isn't that good. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of beginning actors and uh, excuse me artists struggle with that deeply. I was just telling William we had a really personal conversation months ago. Kill the inner voice. Joe Rogan calls it killing the inner bitch. Mm-hmm. And before all the people on the social media and the Twitter and the YouTube comments going, oh, he said bitch. He hates women or something like that. No, actually, it, it's not. It's not that. It's this nagging voice, yeah. nagging something like a nagging thing in you. So. Take, like, kill that voice that's nagging you, that's that's putting insecurities in your ear saying, is that video good enough? Oh, this writing's not so good. Oh, this, this sounds horrible. What are you doing? Are you an artist? Are you really even good? Maybe you're not good. That voice doesn't get a say anymore. Like, visually, I told William, you have to visualize you kicking that voice, kicking that little, little imp creature, like little dark imp creature off a cliff and it falls into the abyss and you're like cool that doesn't get to talk anymore every time it tries to crawl up that hill that cliffside and it starts saying those things you kick it back down and you say no you don't get a voice i'm practicing today and it's gonna be good it might not be perfect but i can make it good because i think deep down inside we all have a really clear judge of what is good and what's not good Mm. i like that yeah So uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back. We're going to talk some more about life, current events, and all the good stuff in between. And we're back. Nobody cares about you, William. (sighs) Anyway. All right, guys. (laughs) (laughs) What were we talking about? Well, actually, I just remembered something I told William. And, you know, for people watching, they might think that, oh, my gosh, you're so mean to your brother. And what do you have to say to them, William? William? Like we rehearsed. He hits me. William, (laughs) no. I poke holes in your armor to make you stronger. And that's... I'm an angel. I think think everybody needs that. Look at me. I'm the best older brother you could ask for. I was talking. Oops. I think it can be dangerous if you surround yourself with people who don't keep you in check. Unbelievable. Because that's how you get people like... like The rudest person ever. Who do you... Oh, are you saying... Oh, go ahead. (sighs) Michael, what's some current events for us? <laughs> well, because uh, Hurricane Dorian is closing. <laughs> it's okay, Michael. Where, where is it? It's okay. It's Michael, d- don't cry. <laughs> People will be okay. Uh. This happens every year, and it's their fault for moving back there. Okay? <laughs> it's their fault for knowingly living in that area. The Gulf? Is that where? Uh, well, are, you, are you out of your damn mind? Florida, bro. Yeah, the Gulf. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god, I'm so angry Hurricanes now. happen in other parts of the it's world too. It's directly east of Florida in the Bahamas. Any other questions, sir? Jesus There he goes Christ. poking holes again. Well, anyway, my question was going to be <laughs> My question was going to be which would you guys rather 
experience. Okay. Earthquake, uh, tornado, or a hurricane. All right. What scale are we talking about on these bad boys? Um, worst of the worst. Yeah, let's go worst of the worst. Okay, great. Okay. F5. F5 tornado or a category, category five. 5 hurricane or a 9.0 earthquake. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That is actually a really good question. Now, I've got to ask you another question before I can answer this question. Sure. Is that okay? Sure. Where am I? Inside or outside? Yeah. Am I in my home? Am I out in a field? Am I at the mall? Because all these are very critical. Those are very critical. But uh, let's say you're at home. At home. At home. Great, great <clears throat> question. You know what? I would have to go with the hurricane. Really? Yeah. With the hurricane. The hurricane. I just answered it. Because <laughs> th those hurricanes seem to do a very broad amount of damage. Now, if the F5 tornado were to hit directly on our apartment, oh, You're we're dead. gone. We're gone. But the hurricane can pass on our apartment. We might have broken windows. The roof might be torn off a little bit, but we'll still be there. Does that make sense? I feel like tornadoes are more concentrated in their powers. Now, earthquake, forget about 9.0. We all dead. I'm not going to be in a building. I hope I'm not in a building when a 9.0 hits. I want to be out in the field so I can feel everything jingle and I can hear everybody screaming in the distance. <laughs> That's my answer. <clears throat> what do you? What, what's your answer, William? And remember, we're on the radio, so we hate dead air. Tornado. Tornado. Ooh, why? Because if I go, I go. But if I don't, I don't know. Look at that mindset. I don't know. You're, you're, just, you're <laughs> just assuming you're going to die. No, I don't know. It really, you know, it really depends where you are, for sure. That's hard. Earthquake. We just I'd, go with, I'd go with earthquake. <sighs> you're dead. <laughs> you you, you don't chose know that. the I, I do. <laughs> I do a 9.0 earthquake in our apartment. I chose a hurricane. Yeah, you can definitely survive that better than yeah. an earthquake. Yeah. Peyton, what do you think? I think I'd have to go tornado. Um, okay. Just because, you know, I, I, I've seen them before. They're, mm. they're a common thing. Um, but I don't know. Because of what happened uh, in Oklahoma a couple months ago, that, that was freaky. Was it in Moore I, again? Do what? Was it in Moore again? There, there was one in uh, Tulsa oh, wow. a couple months ago, and it, it was just back-to-back -back tornadoes, and I was on the phone with like my old roommates, and they're like in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. It started flooding. Uh, River Spirit, oh. living up to its name. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Did you stuff, so. Fun fact, when it was flooded in Tulsa mm -hmm. because of all those storms, the mayor had to go and make it like a public announcement saying, hey – don't let your kids swim in the flooded waters. Oh, right? my God. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't swim in the flooded waters. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, let them swim. <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> we're culling the herd. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Natural selection. But Natural I... selection, yes. Peyton. Yes, I agree. He uh, considered it a state of emergency. Yeah. He told people to leave. And that's what made me debate tornado mm -hmm. because I've never experienced it to that scale, but yeah. I'm still going to have to stick with tornado. Okay. Okay. Fair. What about you? I think hurricane. Hurricane. Because you have advanced warning of it coming. Yes. Significant advanced warning. Tornadoes. You have maybe. Mm, changing my answer. Hurricane. No, you're dead. You did earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're dead. Okay, I'm dead. Mom's, <laughs> mom's crying. <laughs> so sad. Mom's crying. But it just makes it makes sense because you have the most advanced warning for a hurricane. I it's thank like, you. Like your your home's probably going to get destroyed, but you're going to be alive. Exactly. You don't know with the with a tornado. No. Or an earthquake for that matter. No. I you hate learn. Water. You le okay, I learned. What? I hate water. So much. Die in an earthquake. Oh, did, did, you, did you see that? <laughs> can that be? Can that be a shirt? Or will people get really upset? Yeah. Which just says die in an earthquake. Yeah, that's not tasteful. No. Apparently, not, it, apparently in Florida, surprise, surprise, uh, they were telling people not to fire their guns into the hurricane. <laughs> Dude, yeah. do it. No, if you live in Florida, do it. Have you seen the thing that uh, if we all uh, point our fans in the direction of the hurricane, <laughs> it'll funny. blow it the other direction? That's really funny. 
we we haven't talked about this. This popped into my head. The whole Area 51 raid. Oh, my God. Mm. Do you know about this? Yeah. When is it supposed to happen? September Soon. or something. It's this yeah. month, yeah. I have a feeling there is going to be a good number of people will make a road trip out of this. And it will end up being a party just outside of the yeah. – the uh, the barrier. No one's gonna really do it. It's on the twentieth, and it's probably gonna be what the fire festival wishes it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. Oh Which did you see those documentaries? Yes, I did. No. Both of them were Love fantastic. Them. Unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> what a scam artist. The thing about that, if you guys haven't seen it yet, check it out. The one on Netflix, I think, is the the best one where the guy was about to like. It's a good one, yeah. Get, like one of the employees was about to give a blowjob so they can get a bunch of water, water back from yeah. the customs. Well, the thing is, one of them was actually like uh, co-produced with Fuck Jerry, the those guys. Yeah. Right? So I think that was the Netflix one. I think the Hulu one is the more like... Behind the scenes? Not behind the scenes. The Hulu one is takes a bit more of a uh, look at the... Fact or the way that fuck Jerry and then they how they helped promote it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the role, okay. the role that they played. Okay, I'm yeah. talking about the Netflix one. But yeah, that I, was hilarious. Well, <laughs> a character kind of study moment that I found in that one, which was really interesting to me, was when things were really starting to turn south, and people were trying to find what was his name, Seth? No, what's his name? The guy's Billy uh, Billy McFarlane. 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 Yeah, and they were like. Where is he? Where is he? Yeah. And whenever they would find him, they would be like, hey, what's going on? He's like, oh, no, it, it'll work out. It'll work out. Trust me. And it's like they believed him so much because things were going so bad and he was so calm about it that they're like, maybe it will work out when there was no chance of any of it <laughs> working out. He would just consistently lie and then consistently not be found. He's like, oh, he took a, the ATV to the beach. He was still trying to live this even this after life. he was caught and back in the States and about to go to court, he was doing another scam for yeah. something else. Too. Yes. It was like, hey, guy, this is just self-sabotage now. And you know what? I think people like that, they know that they're in the shit so bad that they have – they're like, well, I can either freak out and cry or like cancel everything and face this head on. Or honestly, I can actually just keep doing what I'm doing. Ride this thing out until I have to go and then just whenever I can find an opportunity to keep doing what I'm doing, they'll never face their problems. And so they always keep pushing the boundary. And I feel like part of them wants to get in so much trouble and is like begging for this hell ride to stop. I mean we just talked about something we can't talk about on air. For sure. About somebody who's doing stuff. This is the worst thing to say on air by the way. It's someone who's continuously doing something so illegal begging to be caught yeah yeah and it's i'm it's not gonna mention any names, thing <laughs> but it's sure. like yeah. someone you've worked with professionally yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the music industry and oh my gosh that's psychotic almost behavior but it's not psychotic because when you really understand it you're like oh they all they have no other choice but to do that that's what they feel like at least and they're begging to be caught it's nuts dude it's freaking nuts i love it such yeah. good character studies. It is a good character study. It's it's very interesting psychologically. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I have a question. Yeah. Since you've seen – you guys have seen the Fire Festival documentary. Mm-hmm. When do you think you would have jumped ship if you worked for this dude? I'll tell you when I would have jumped ship. Are you talking about during the festival or like before Oh no no. off? Uh, well, uh, when they were in the process of like... Okay, so the process. The process of it. Okay. I'll tell you where I would have jumped ship. Whenever they were like, so he actually doesn't own... Like we have, we don't have access to this island or anything and we yeah. have no access. Uh, we, we have to actually put it here. But our business plans say that we can't do anything. But he's still uh, saying we, we could plant it here, but we can't. And I'd be like, oh, well, I'm out. Well, I'm, done. Yeah. I'm, I'm gone. Well, the time that... He had to put all that together. Didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Something like five or six months. I don't know. Yeah, like the whole thing. Yeah, the, the whole. And then thing. when he came back, when he came back with the five or six months, I think I would have probably jumped ship. Yeah, yeah, I was like, uh, sorry, I've put on, I've helped put on like little things mm-hmm. that take months to prepare. And you're trying to do this. Uh, I don't know, man. And then 
I don't know. It felt like the more and more things went wrong, the more and more people were like, all right, we got to dive deeper into this. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, Mm -hmm. whoa, 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 whoa. No. No. Stop. Jump ship. Yeah. Give people their money back. Don't put it on. Apologize. And in fact, tell them, you know what? We be honest about it. If I bet you, if he was honest from the get go, be like, you know what? We needed more time for a, a, a project this yeah. big to 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 make it the caliber that it needs to be. Mm-hmm. And that might have even been better marketing. Yeah, you never know. So yeah. if you just, yeah, I don't know. No, nope. facing your problem head on was something that he was not doing. I don't nope. think. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you the story. I, I jumped ship on a project. And it was one of those things where it's like, hi, I'm a red flag. Nice to meet you. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm out of here. <laughs> right. Can you talk much about it? Or yeah, I, I don't give a shit. I'll talk about it now. Okay. So my uh, <laughs> my old web series that I used to do with my uh, roommates, we were hired by this musical theater company to do these like 8 to 13 short videos for them to raise money for their Kickstarter page for their musical theater production company. So we were hired by them. And, like, and you guys get 10% or something like that of the entire – money raised right so i was like okay cool okay and so each each video wanted to be released at a certain time like a week after week a weekly thing yeah and they wanted each one to have come from a musical uh musical play so like the first one the wizard of oz or the second one like uh uh singing or what was called um the, the the sound of music the third one chicago the fourth one whatever so each one had a theme and within each one we had to like promote the Kickstarter page and okay. promote the musical theater company. We didn't have a lot of time. And it was one of those things where the guy was like, oh, we want this many, this many, this many. And I was looking at my – I remember we were talking about it. I'm like, dude, you know how many hours it's going to take to edit all this and how much post-production and you know how hard it is to work with green screen and then like each script they want like at least five minutes to film and then five minutes you know how many days you know how much money you know how much props we need we need like oh there's no way we can do it in this short amount of time finally what i made me jump ship is when we got one of the notes back at this like little meeting and he goes can we make this scene like mockumentary style like the office and we're all like what what uh, may, may we ask why this is the musical the-, the guy who was in charge of this whole thing from the musical theater uh, production company and he goes, oh, um, yeah, um, I know The Office is popular right now, so I figured we'd do it like The Office. I haven't seen it, but I just know it's popular, so can we do it like that? <laughs> oh, well, bye. I'm gone. Bye. Yeah. So I told him, sorry, guys, I'm not doing this anymore. I can't. Sorry. Makes sense. <laughs> Imagine getting that note on something. Hey, can we make it like this? I've never seen that movie or that yeah. TV show, but let's make it like this. Sounds like he was just ignorant to, to how much work goes into yeah. something like that and, and who he was asking to, to do it. Yeah, and he always used to shut uh, shut down my ideas in a very uh, non-professional way. Mm. Uh, Jante knows about this because he was there. And ye- like a, a few years have passed. I'm on his email list for something, for something he needs to raise money for. And he's asking me for money or something like that. I wrote him back this email. I was like, take me off your fucking email list. I'm not oh. do, I'm not giving you any money. Are you out of your mind? He's like, well, just unsubscribe then. I'm like, no, take me – you take me off. I'm not b- – blocked. Bye. Dude, I was so angry. Don't like the guy. Well, this just escalated really tell quickly. Tell me how you really feel about it though. I know. Some people like that, I just like, bye. Um, it's hard when you're first starting too because you get uh, – like starting a bunch of stuff because you get excited about – opportunities like that almost. yes when you, you do hear about it you know you do um so just knowing your capabilities and and what's feasible what's not feasible what's worth it what's not worth it that's important for sure absolutely and knowing the best thing i learned starting in high school time management mm. that is the most crucial thing adults can learn how to manage your time and if you're not good at it and you're lazy oh you are in for a bumpy ride buddy mm. extremely bumpy Right. You have to know. You have to know it. Yeah. Was my, that, that was my stomach. That was your stomach. I think yeah. we heard that. Yeah. 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 Yep. We heard that. That yep. was my stomach. Was- I got so worked up about that. Even my stomach agrees with me. It's like, <laughs> that's the quote for the show. <laughs> we Sam's stomach. We're going to confuse the hell out of people with that quote. I'm going to do it. Do it. We Sam's stomach. Just in parentheses. <laughs> uh, time management is very important. I think what we talked about the other day, setting deadlines for yourself is also important if you're trying to yeah. um, 
better yourself in a certain way or if you're trying to, you know, hey, release I will, music. I'm, I'm being real on the show. For sure. And I think you work better with deadlines. I that's agree. My, that's my opinion. I agree. I agree. I work better with deadlines too. Because I'll get comfortable and, and mm-hmm. think, oh, you know, I can just keep tweaking. Yeah. I can keep tweaking and, and doing this. And, and it's frustrating and fun at the same time. It's a weird thing. But it's important whenever you are an artist making something. Yes. To make something, finish it, let it go. Move on to the next thing. Constantly keep creating, involving, and I'm saying this out loud, but I'm mainly talking to myself. When That's I good. Say this. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, so yeah, and dude, you are so lucky to have me as a brother. I'm looking straight at the camera, by the way. We at the audience, dude. You are so lucky. Like I am lucky. I'm not gonna say how much, how lucky I am, <laughs> because I don't want to boost your ego too much. Nah, dude, just do it. We, we all like know it's. No, we I'm all know angel. it's just we Sam's world. We're living in it. That's a great name, exactly. by the way. Exactly. I wonder where you got that name. That's it's you. We Sam's World, and you all are just living in it. <laughs> Dude, my, narcissistic. Peyton, Peyton's looking at his phone. Michael's like, eh. <laughs> It's a joke, guys. It's a joke. <laughs> no, but thank you. I appreciate you allowing me to come on and talk with you about these things, because oh, talking about these things, it's not just, you know, fun. It's helpful to me. Dude, you know? I'm telling you, I wish... <sighs> I know I, I like the way my journey has gone so far, so I, I don't wish anything different. I just I hope other people listening to this mm. gain a little bit of strength, a little bit of knowledge to help them out too. That's what it's about. Mo- keep yourself motivated and in check, and keep that fire. You know how easy a to do list is to do in the morning of lists you have to do. Mm. Start with the things you can do right away. Mm. Usually, I like to do the easiest stuff, stuff that I can just mark off. Yeah. Just the act of marking something off feels good. Absolutely. That's also one of the reasons why I like cleaning the house, keeping it clean. Mm. That's a victory for me. That's yeah. something I have control over. Small victories. Small victory that builds. Yes. I agree. Dude. How much time we got left? Oh, this. We got about uh, nine minutes. Oh, nine minutes. Oh, we got good. Oh, M- Michael, any other current events, by the way? I was just... <clears throat> we went from like oh. one current <laughs> event to like... This is kind of sad. Um, we went on a journey. Yeah, we did. Uh, I just saw that Kevin Hart got in that accident. It's yeah, rest in peace. No, he's I, he's okay. Oh, he's okay. Well, oh, okay, sorry. I think he has like some back injuries, but he just he's has alive. Some back injuries. He's alive. But the Dude. car looked demolished, and so I just want a little message: drive safe, everyone out there, especially on Mulholland. It's very curvy. It's very, right. um, very dangerous to drive fast on that road. I just gave some of our listeners a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, dude. Come on. Sorry, man. sorry. I didn't know. Um, I had wrong information. Blame so it on Michael. Drive safe. Make sure you always try. Sorry, I have to blame it on you. I am the face <clears throat> of the show. Um, so, e-scooters were are pulled from Miami streets to avoid scooter NATO during Hurricane Dorian. Oh, because they'll. <laughs> oh, whoa! Wow. You know, I would never have even thought about that. <laughs> That's a really interesting concern because it makes sense. Ooh. Wow, that would suck though. One of those scooters Get hit fly- in the face with one of those. You're well, dead. You died by scooter. <gasps> How does that feel? Not good. Well, yeah. Feels like nothing after you're dead. <laughs> but then we'll get a Ouija board and we'll bring and you bring back. Bring back. Yep. We'll bring the scooters back. <laughs> now will you do it with us? Done. Cool. Good. Deal. Also, uh, Donald Trump... Uh, Is the president. Did you hear that? <laughs> leaked. He, no, not leaked, but he... He won. He... He tweeted out a uh, what probably should have been or what probably is a classified uh, <laughs> yeah photo classic. what photo of what of uh, a missile launch that happened in Iran or something that exploded that failed yeah <laughs> yeah what now here's the issue with this I read up on this the the thing that's supposed to be classified is the we location? are no Look we at aren't how how detailed. clear that is that's from space that's a satellite photo. So that's the issue. We're, we're not supposed to let people know how good our satellite images is. Why? So that they, they think, oh, if they're not that great, we can put stuff in the open. Now that they know yeah. that our satellite images, image it's quality is that thing. good, <laughs> oh, dude, they're going to be hiding stuff a lot better. Also, you can see the, the shadow of him taking the photo. Oh, my gosh, you can. And the flash. I'm Michael. I'm not, I'm not sure if I see that. What are you talking about? Here's the Do you see that? Or here's the here's the phone. Here's, here's the his flash. head on the right side. Oh here's God. his head. 
There's the hand and everything. Yeah. He doesn't even know how to take a screenshot. <laughs> well, no, it's like an actual like photo that it like was part of like a classified briefing, oh. probably. Oh my god. Why gosh. did no one stop him? Unbelievable. Is that still on Twitter? It's a little bit yeah. weird. That hasn't been taken down. No. Wow. Wow. Well it's still there. Yikes. My gosh. <laughs> It's funny that there's no, like, there's a lot of checks and balances for, like, you know, the government and whatever, but there's no check and balance for the, his Twitter. It's like, you would think someone, would, <laughs> it would be going through someone, but no, he, it's just him, and it's almost hard to believe it's just him because of I've, uh, how he I've, types. I've worked with someone like like him before. Mm. Uh, my old boss at the L.A. Film School is basically Donald Trump. That's why I know, like... What? Are you talking like Just personality like, characteristics? Personality okay. characteristics. Everything about him is basically Trump, and that's why I was like, "Oh well, who was who was Don Jr. getting a call from from an unknown number?" And I was like, "The only fucking asshole who called ever called me from an unknown number was my old boss, mm. because he wanted people not to know that it was him, but everyone knew it was him, because he's the only because one he's the only it. one that calls from an unknown number." Mm. Why does he do that? thinks he's being smart or he's being like it's a power move he's all about like power moves and ah. like he's the kind of asshole who would make people wait in the lobby for 15 minutes and then have them wait in our lobby for 15 minutes and then have them wait in the conference room for 15 minutes before he'd actually come out for the meeting just just because he yeah, he thinks he's like the big deal maker like power player that's why I get wow. Frustrating. Like a lot of the, a lot of the, like the meetings that like you would see like Nancy Pelosi sitting in the Oval Office talking to Donald Trump. And she's like, "Well, no, you can't do that." That was basically me mm. all the time. Wow. Telling my boss, "Nope, you can't do that." Here's why you can't do that. That's why this is a stupid idea. Frustrating, man. <laughs> this is frustrating. <laughs> it should be a reality TV show in the White House. He would love that. He would love that. Yeah, he probably. Would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More money for him. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Richard Bin Laden. Oh, yes. We're back here in the studio, and uh, one of our – William had to go use the bathroom, but surprisingly, uh, one of our past guests came through. He was walking by. He was actually banging on the window. Uh, Richard Bin Laden, uh, thanks for coming on, man. What's up, man? I'm so glad to be back, man. Yeah, we're happy to have you in the studio. <laughs> oh, my God, man. I was just playing a game of bing bong. Do you know this game, Bing Bong? Yes, Bing Bong. I hate this game. What a stupid game. Why? <laughs> Keep the Bing. I just want the Bong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, My I get that. By the way, do you know this guy, Jay? No. His name is Jay. No. I hate this guy, man. Why? What did he do to you? The other day, I got a ticket for Jay walking. <laughs> Oh, the worst. Yeah, that's the worst. Oh, I'm angry right now. <laughs> hey, I hope, you know, I saw you walking, but did you drive here? Did you, uh, I drove my Lamborghini. Okay. Just kidding. Toyota. <laughs> okay. Go roll. Okay, next topic. Sex trafficking. What a shitty way to be late. <laughs> and we're off the air that's the clip that's the clip we're gonna use there it is. that's the clip well you'll never know what you're gonna get with me baby <laughs> oh I I I'm starting to like him. I like you too, man. What a crazy studio, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. When are we going to get that Ouija board, man? <laughs> I'll do a Ouija board with Richard. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Did you see that demon, man? <laughs> so <laughs> crazy, man. You know, when William started doing Richard for the first time in the apartment, I hated it he so hated much. Him a lot. Yeah. I like got upset with him for real. I was like, you need to stop. He made me not do it. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you can do any other. Ca Dude, you need to bring Kazwick on here sometime. I will not bring Kazwick. Why on. not? Uh, uh, Is that Kaz too much? Kazwick treads some dangerous waters. Probably not appropriate for a lot of viewers. I don't you know? care. 
Um, I will do it next time. Yeah, yeah next time. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for coming on the show, man. Um, when do you think your new song will come out? Soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a I've week? Got, um, I've got my friend helping me with uh, a little cover. He's really good at graphic design. Great. Um, and yeah, looking to release it by the end of this month. Well, great, man. I hope everything. Sooner, yeah. Yeah. Well, can't wait to hear it. Get all the millions of followers you will get after people listen <laughs> to it. It's not about that. It's just about, you know, affecting people in a positive way, whether it's one person or a million. That's oh. about the money. Do you have a music page? Uh, yeah. J- just go to my Instagram, Quiche Music. Mm-hmm. Uh, follow me there. That's where I'll, I'll be posting. Great. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for coming on the show, brother. Thanks for having me. And we'll carpool back to our <laughs> Michael, play us out with that little dingling. Um, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> That, 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 came, that came, What's going on here? That came out. We, we, that, we, what kind of on. joint you run in here? Hold on. We're not playing it, the song music. I'm, let me explain what I meant by that. Because that was borderline sexual harassment. <laughs> play us out with that. Play us. What I said was, play us out with that little dingling. I meant it like, you know, with that ringling. That, <laughs> that, not, not your dingling. Which... He's in deep no shit now, me. man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. Honestly. Dude. I'm so glad this is not on the broadcast version. Show us your dingling, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Do it. Do it now, man. I dare you. <laughs> Oh, uh, thanks for tuning into the show. <laughs> Thank you, Adobe. Oh shit. Nice guy digital. Thank you to our all new Patreon supporters. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Peyton. Steph. Thank you to you, the listener. Make sure you subscribe to us. Thank you, William. Make sure you follow him on Instagram, Quiche Music, for all the latest updates on the music. Uh, always remember to listen, think, and then talk. <laughs>